I want to cover a little more on ecosystems and abiotic versus biotic components. So we talked about the ecosystems have abiotic or non-living components like climate, for example. Climate is the major abiotic component, time, energy, that sort of thing. And it also has living parts, and those are called the biotic components. And here, just a little illustration to um, talk about abiotic versus biotic. Let's say you have mice at home and you want to control the mice. What is an abiotic control you might use? And what is a biotic control you might use? Think about that for a second. And these are just kind of simple examples. A mouse trap might be an abiotic component because it's non-living. And if you had a cat, that would be a biotic control. So the point being, when one living thing is influencing the other, like the cat influencing the mice, that's considered a biotic control. If it's something non-living, then that would be considered abiotic. Okay, so ecosystems have abiotic components. Climate is the most important one at a global scale. Time, energy, talk about energy in a moment. And it also has material that living things need like water and carbon and nitrogen and oxygen and other minerals. So there's these different cycles. People who study ecosystems um, talk a lot about cycling, cycling of energy and cycling of material in and out of ecosystems. So these are some figures from the book just to illustrate this. This is showing the energy cycling in and out of an ecosystem. And the, probably the most important thing here is that if you trace the energy all backwards, the energy that powers ecosystems ultimately comes from the sun. The sun's energy is the, the key source of energy within ecosystems. And then it gets moved into chemical energy and through, it gets photosynthesis, give plants biomass and animals eat those plants, and they give off heat and so on. But it ultimately traces back to the sun. There's other cycles in ecosystems, such as the carbon cycle. And one thing I'll point out is something we've talked about with the carbon cycle is that one key source of carbon comes from human sources, such as burning of fossil fuels. And that has added to the natural amount of carbon within ecosystems. So probably the key additional source of carbon in recent times has been human beings with the burning of fossil fuels. However, there is a natural carbon cycle that exists as well of carbon being given off and absorbed naturally. However, what we're doing is we're adding additional carbon to that background cycle. There's also a, an oxygen cycle, oxygen cycling in and out of ecosystems, and a nitrogen cycle, and so on. So that's, these are different cycles of material going in and out of ecosystems. And I also want to talk about trophic structure, or who eats who in an ecosystem. And that's part of the biotic, or what we call community components. So community components are how living things interact with each other. And sometimes it's through competition or symbiosis. But uh, the one thing I do want to focus on is what's called trophic structure. And this is about the food chain, or who eats who in an ecosystem. Okay, trophic structure, the, the base of the food chain are autotrophs. Autotrophs are essentially plants which provide the base of the food chain. And then plants get eaten by um, heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are essentially animals and we can divide them into different types. Herbivores are those animals that eat plants. And as you go up the food chain, there are also carnivores. Carnivores which eat other heterotrophs. And then there are also decomposers or detrivores. So detrivores are those that recycle the material back and make it available for plants. I put a worm here, but usually it's things like bacteria. Put that into view there. So we have autotrophs, which are plants. We have heterotrophs, which are animals. Then we have decomposers, which are often bacteria also earthworms. So when we're talking about the distribution of plants and animals, it depends not only on their physical environment, but 
it can also be influenced by the presence of other living things. So just to recap, um, autotrophs in, are essentially plants, and these are the base of the food chain. They are plugged directly into the abiotic environment because they don't eat other things. What they do is they take in sunlight and carbon and water, and they create food that is then available for other living things, including heterotrophs, which are animals. They can be divided into herbivores, which eat plants, carnivores, which eat animals, and then also omnivores, which can eat both. Then lastly, the cycle is completed by decomposers or detrivores, which recycle dead material. Okay. Now, primary production is done by autotrophs, by plants. And this is what we call the, the primary production is the formation of organic material by plants. And then we also have what's called secondary production, which is like the cows eating the plants and then growing. That's done by heterotrophs. Okay, so autotrophs, they take in water, sunlight, and minerals, and they do what's called primary production. Okay. So primary productivity is the, what this means is the creation of new organic material by autotrophs. They do this through photosynthesis. They have a chemical reaction which creates new organic material. And what they do, is they create biomass. And biomass refers to the total amount of living material in an ecosystem. And that's created um, primarily initially through autotrophs. And then it's added to when heterotrophs eat the plants and then they grow as well. There's different ways of describing primary productivity. There's what's called net primary productivity and gross primary productivity. It's kind of like your paycheck you have a gross pay and then your net pay. So net primary productivity is after you account for the material that's been lost in the process and this is the total amount of added material. However, it's probably just easy enough to just call it all uh, primary productivity and not worry so much about net versus gross. Okay, so you have you know the, the sun powering ecosystems you have plants growing, and then you have primary consumers, and then you have secondary consumers which eat them. So secondary productivity is, is done by, by heterotrophs. And this is like you eating and growing, and that's what secondary productivity is. And uh, one thing you might notice is that you, if you measure the way the amount of food that you ate last month, you didn't grow by that much weight. You didn't add that much weight because you're burning off that as well. So one thing unique about heterotrophs is that they do burn off a lot of their calories. And so what that means is that you have a loss of biomass between trophic levels. So just a little illustration of this that, so let's, this is in kilograms, but let's just say pounds to make it simple. So for me to grow one pound, I would need to eat 10 pounds of salmon because I'm burning off nine pounds. And for those salmon to get that big, they need 100 pounds of krill and these types of creatures because they're burning off energy. And for those to gain their weight, they need 1,000 pounds of, of plankton in the ocean. So it takes a 1,000 pounds of these plankton to feed the 100 pounds of krill to feed the 10 pounds of salmon for me to gain one pound. And that's what we mean by biomass is lost between those levels. Here's another illustration. If you um, use this corn and soybeans as food, you could feed 22 people. But if you use that to feed one cow, that cow would probably provide enough to feed one person because you're losing biomass between these different levels. All right, so just to recap, autotrophs are plants and they do primary production. Heterotrophs are generally animals and they do secondary production. 